Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here, and today I'm bringing you my Everton vs Manchester United preview. Now, if you haven't seen my Premier League predictions, I uploaded that at 3 today, where obviously I, I do the score predictions for every game in the Premier League this week, and, well, all 10. So, anyhow, let's get into this. Now, I'm doing this an hour before Louis van Gaal and Martinez's press conferences, so I'm not sure about injuries, so my information will be old information. You will know more than me. So if I say, for instance, Schweinsteiger, oh, why, you know, he's not injured, but I think he is, then that's why, because I haven't seen the press conference. So, yeah, forgive me for that. But anyway, heading into this, I'm not overly confident, all right? I think a draw would be a fantastic result, especially at Goodison Park. But ultimately, we need a win to keep up with, you know, Man City and Arsenal. We played so bad in the first 30 minutes against Arsenal. But the funny thing is, we've done that all throughout the season. We've took 20, 30, even 40 minutes to get into a game. And to be honest, we needed our arse handed to us so we can realise, look, we can't play this shit, piss poor passing bullshit for 30 minutes, a slow tempo. We need to start right from the off. And we shouldn't have needed a 3-0 you know, demolition in the first 20 minutes to realise that. It should just come hand in hand, but it didn't. So hopefully this will now help the players to realise we need to start strongly. And against Everton, this would be a perfect time to show it because they are a high quality team and they've got some quality players. You look at Barkley, he's on the form of his life, all right? He's playing really, really well. And there's comparisons to a young Wayne Rooney. I think they're a little bit too high because Rooney did start when he was 16 and by the age of 21, he was already world class. Barkley isn't at that level yet. But hopefully he can hit his potential because he's English. I do want England to do well, so it would be nice if he could. Uh, Lukaku's on inspired form as well. You look at, I think, John Stones and Coleman are coming back from injury. Again, could be wrong. Martinez's conference is uh, an hour. <laughs> I should have done this after the conferences, but I just don't have time. So I think they are back, and they are key defenders for evidence, so they will be stronger in defence. Looking at us... We, we need to play Schneidlin. I have no idea why we didn't play him against Arsenal. He's been our best midfielder, all right? He's so underrated because all he does is clean up the shit. He intercepts. Like on FIFA 16, you get all these stupid interceptions, all right, that are, like, programmed in, and it's really hard to break down. That's the rule Schneidlin does for the team. He cleans up the shit just ahead of the defenders, and he allows either Carrick or Schweinsteiger to have a little bit more time in the centre mid role to ping balls forward, to find these unreal through balls. You, the best example of this, I know it was only against Club Bruges, but it's Schweinsteiger's assist to Ander Herrera, where he just cuts the defence because he's got time because Schneidlin is just behind him. Anyhow, against a big team, and I'd class Everton as a top seven, top six club maybe this season, so they are a big team. We cannot play Carrick and Schweinsteiger. It needs to be one or the other, and I think Schweinsteiger's picked up a slight knock, so... I think Carrick will be preferred, but Schneidlin has to play there. There are no doubts about that, all right? You look at the defence, we do need another centre-back in the summer because I don't think, as a long-term prospect, Daly Blind is the answer. He's a good rotation option, and he's been fantastic, and he's developing a good partnership with Smalling that can hopefully see us through to the end of the season. Hopefully they don't pick up any more injuries. And last game, he, he was, well, found out, ultimately, so... I, I do want to see him play though, I do want to see him him and Smalling play because I think they have got a good partnership and it's probably our best defensive partnership at the minute. I know Phil Jones is back but I think Daly Blind does a better job than Phil Jones at centre-back. Smalling however, he's been on inspired form and hopefully he can keep it up because then he will get the label world class in a couple of years. If he plays like he has at the start of this season and the back end of last season then he will be a world class defender and I really hope he can do that. Dormian got man of the match uh, for Italy. He also got a goal, so he, he will be playing right back. That's where I want to see him play. I think Rojo's back. Obviously, there's rumours of a spat with Louis van Gaal, but hopefully he will play at left back because that is the defence I want to see. Rojo, Daly Blaine, Smalling and Dormian. David De Gea, 
10 saves against Ukraine, all right, that's the most by any Spanish goalkeeper, which is only Casillas, um, since 2006, which is incredible. Thiago even admitted that they won the game because of David De Gea, so I'm so happy that we've got him. All these rumours of a 30 million release close, I'll probably do another video on that. That's bullshit. It'll be 50 million. Ed Woodward isn't the type to put a 30 million close on a player where we can get 50 million easily, so... Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Anyway, Schneidlin in the CDM role, and I would have Schweinsteiger if he's fit, but I don't think he is, so I'm going to say Carrick. My front four. Personally, I would keep Memphis there. He has had an unbelievable amount of criticism, and yes, I agree with you know the partying thing. He needs to cool that down a bit, but he's 21. All right, you look at most you know 19 to 21 year olds, and they do have kind of problems with this sort of like lifestyle trying to balance it with football etc so I wouldn't worry too much on that I like the fact that he's arrogant all right on the pitch off the pitch I don't like that but on the pitch we need that you look at players that we've had in the past like Ronaldo the obvious comparison all right people are saying he's 21 and Memphis is 21 and Ronaldo was so much better at 21 and yes he probably was but he was at Manchester United two years prior. You look at Memphis's stats this season, four goals, three assists, doesn't tell the full story obviously because he's had some really really poor performances but still that is a lot more than all than most players in the Premier League all right that's all competitions obviously but still he's shown what he can do and I think the main reason is his decision making, which comes with maturity, with age. All right, his decision making has been really, really bad. He tries to shoot an awful lot when sometimes a pass is a better option. He tries to take on his man, but that's what I want to see. All right, I don't want to see this piss poor passing bullshit that left to right, left to right, just no breaking through. I like players who take risks, which is why I don't want it to be discouraged. I don't want him to, you know, stop doing what he's doing. It isn't working every time, but when it does, it looks fantastic. Look against Club Bruges. I know it's only Club Bruges, but that finish outside the box comes with talent, all right? That comes with practice. You could do that against any team. You could get in that position and finesse the ball. That just comes with talent. So yeah, I think he will get better, but the people comparing him to Bebe, Seriously, are you retarded? Like, no way is he Bebe. No way. And no way is he Nani, alright? He's a better player and he will prove it in time. He's 21. He's only been at the club two months. He will make mistakes, but let him have the benefit of the doubt. Maybe him getting dropped for a couple of games could, you know, have a positive effect on him because he's got a fantastic work ethic. You can tell he wants to be the best, alright? Obviously, he thinks he's better than what he is at the minute, but I like that mentality because... When he realizes he, you know, hasn't had a great performance, it it makes him want to be the best. So he'll put the effort in. He'll put the work off the pitch with the gym and all that, and he'll hit it to try and be the best. And that's kind of a mentality that Ronaldo had. But anyway, I'll do a separate video on Memphis if you do want, because I could talk for ages about the pros and cons and all that bullshit. Because I do want him to become a legendary number seven at Manchester United because it's been so long since we've had one. So I want to get, you know, behind him and I want it to work. But anyway, the rest of the team, I would play Ander Herrera in the number 10, but Louis van Gaal isn't. He's going to play Wayne Rooney and Wayne Rooney really needs to perform. He's had the international break off. So now there's, there's no excuses for it, all right? He should be fully fit now. He should be able to do what he did in the past. And that's take a man on. You know, shoot now and again. Because Rooney hasn't been doing that much this season. And his first touch has been pathetic. He needs to improve that. And I really hope he does. Because I really do like Wayne Rooney as a player. When he's on form, he's unstoppable. But it's just finding that form. Will he be able to find it again? Hopefully. But personally, I would drop him for two, three games. So he can find out he's not undroppable and maybe that can spark something and then if it doesn't then he might need replaced at the end of the season like ultimately we're Manchester United we can't you know feel uh what's the word like we can't just feel sorry for you know legends at the club because he is a legend all right he could be our highest ever scorer so of course Rooney's a Manchester United legend but we just can't feel sorry for them. We need to be winning, so he needs to be dropped personally for now. But I don't think he will, so hopefully he can get the performance that he, he desperately needs. You look at the last two players on the team sheet, Matt and Martial are two best performers this season. Matt has been incredible. I think he's had five goals, five assists, something like that. And um, he's starting to get in 
the Spain squad again, which is nice to see because it's very hard to get in that squad with the level of midfielders they've got. But he's been exceptional. And Marcial, you know, he he's... Um, what I was saying about decision making for 19 to 21 year olds, he's like one in 500 I put on Twitter that, you know, at that age is so composed. His decision making is on point. That is one of his best attributes. And you look at his lifestyle, he's already got a kid and he's already married, I think, at 19. He's got the lifestyle and the mentality of a 28 year old, which is probably why he's doing as well as what he is. And long may it continue, he looks like an unreal player and he looks as though he could be the real deal. He could be this world-class striker that we really, really need at the club. So hopefully he can get a goal, etc. But if he can't, you look at his general play. He got an assist for France. He, he sets goals up. He's not greedy. That's exceptional to find in a 19-year-old. They want you know, to prove that they are the best. I'm 19, so you want to prove that you can do you can do it, you can shoot, you can score, etc. But he doesn't seem to be phased. He's He just does the right thing every time. And it, it's unreal to find that mentality in a 19-year-old. So I'm delighted he's there. Hopefully he can keep up this form and, uh, yeah, just play well for the team. As a team, we've got better players than evident, obviously. So if they all perform, then we've got a big chance of winning. But I look at the form of the teams. I look at the fact it's at Goodison Park, a bogey ground for us. I'm going to say 1-1, which would be a good result. Yes, we can win, but we can also lose at the same time. So, well, that, that is the most obvious statement I have ever said on this channel. But essentially, I hope you know what I mean. But I'm going to say 1-1. But I really, really hope I'm wrong. I really hope we can win. Uh, well, we do win. But I'm going to say 1-1. Let me know your thoughts and uh, reasons on your... Uh, predictions etc but yeah 1-1 one, one is my prediction this video is going on for far too long so I'm going to end it here hopefully you have enjoyed and yeah peace